Hello, my babies. Okay, so one question I get an awful lot of is, how do you do all this crazy stuff with CC3 that there aren't any tutorials or um, manuals or really anybody other than me doing? So um, one of those things is converting your CC3 character into a VC face VRM character that you could then use with the entire world of resources that are available to VTubers. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Are you excited yet? I am. Okay, so as you can see, my screen has uh, CC3 on it. And the thing we wanna make sure that we have before we even attempt to do anything else is the um, X plus tongue um, blend shapes. Those will export with your character, but they do have to be set up. So as you can see, these are already set up. When you select this, it'll uh, it'll come up with a notice that says, do you really want to do this? And what you want to do is click OK, and that will change your model and allow those blend shapes to come into fruition. Now, as far as VTubing, they're not all named right. Um, Real Illusion has sort of this naming convention that it uses all to itself, but we'll work through that too. I have a solution for that and let's get to it. So we close out of that. And then what we do is we export our model. In this case, we are exporting for Unity with I, with Y in the up direction. We're gonna name, rename Invalid Bones Rename Duplicate Bones. Mouth Open is Morph, which is really important for later. Zero Motion Root. No, we don't want Zero Motion Root. We don't want that. These two right here will break any animations you set to them, so don't, don't use them. All right, so uh, we want to use T-Pose as our Bind Pose. We want Unity Texture Presets. Don't need that. Now, over here, we want to delete hidden faces because this is important for animation. We want to use 2K textures because we don't want to lose any detail. And we do not, under any circumstances, want to embed our textures. You with me? Awesome. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do an, an export. It's gonna give us a warning about re-importing, but I'll tell you what, um, VRM models are not going to re-import into CC3, so <laughs> that is not a concern we have today. All right, so I'm just gonna save this. I've already got it exported, but I want you to see the, the process. And we're just gonna let it go. All right, now that we have it export, we exported, we are going to open up Unity Hub. And we're just going to call this, we're going to use Unity 2023-32F1. Um, but anything up until 2021 works. And even 2021 should work, but I have not tested it yet. So that's the version we're going to use. And we're going to call this one video. Do, do, do. Give it a second to load. All right, and here we are inside the Unity environment. Cha-cha-cha. What I am gonna do here is go into my storage monkey and we're gonna go to software, Unity. And I've got all this stuff saved, but there will be a link in the description. So the first thing we want is the auto setup for Unity. And what that's going to do is take all of our CC3 characters and auto format them as we import them. This comes from Realusion and it is magical how well it works, even in the 3D pipeline. Okay, so we've got that. The very next thing we want is under VRM related and we want my hacky presets that I added instead of the regular VRM package. I'll include a link to this one in the description as well. 
Now we import and select everything. This will take a second. What we're doing now is uh, changing the uh, color space to gamma, which unfortunately we have absolutely no control over. So you're just gonna have to let it do this part of the process. And then since it's a uh, Japanese application, it thanks you for doing what it required you to do. And you, and you click close. All right. So now we have a workspace that is fully workable. And we're going to take our CC character and drop her into CC assets. And the things we want to drop is uh, everything in this directory. Always save a character export to a new directory. Everything in the directory, uh, the base.fbm, the textures, the base.fbx, and the base.json, all of these files need to go into the uh, exporter in order it, or into the importer rather for this to work so here we go let's drag what's cool is in the background um the importer for cc3 is actually running and there's actually nothing you need to do at this point in the process sweet now we have all of our stuff. We have, you should have your base file, your base JSON, and a base animator. Um, they, they'll be called um, based on what you call them. Just as a rule, I like to call uh, my base figures base. It's just easier that way. Um, so now we need to check her out and see what happens. And there she is all pretty and perfect no issues this time at all thank goodness okay so um we're gonna do two levels of conversion on her to get her so that she runs as a vrm but the first thing we have to do is um get her rig configured uh there's one thing that you always have to worry about when it comes to vrms and that is the jawbone right here. Oops, no, right there. The jawbone um, is never going to be uh, open um, if we do it right. Because um, <laughs> if you animate the jawbone and the program that you're putting her into um, does not have an animate jawbone feature, she's just gonna walk around with a dumb look on her face the whole time. It, it is not even worth it. So, um, as you can see though, we've got some other stuff going on and we probably just want to cha-cha-cha. She's not in the T-Pose. Well, she is sort of, as you can see, this is sort of an ongoing problem, but we're gonna fix this on the way out. Let's just get out of this. Uh, what you want to do is go to the VRM zero menu. Oops. Click on export VRM. And you want to make T-Pose Unity internal. And that should snap her into place without, without breaking her too bad. Now we should be all set, theoretically. So our first round of exporting happens here. We select a title. We select a version number. We select an author. And then we click on export. I like to put references here. Like, you see, they don't tell you what kind of references you need to put in. So sometimes I'll put in something like, my name is Ricardo Montoya, and you killed my father, or you remind me of the babe, or don't feed them after midnight. Something funny and entertaining, it makes absolutely no difference, but I am weird and kooky that way. <laughs> All right, so uh, we wanna find our projects, project directory. Sometimes it'll open you right up into it, sometimes it won't. There's your assets, your library, and all that stuff. Um, you wanna put your VRM inside the, uh, not under your assets, but in the main project directory. 
And now it's gonna export. All right, so um, don't be alarmed if this process takes uh, anywhere between uh, three and five minutes. If it takes like 30 or 40 minutes to export your VRM, you wanna go to tools and find your character creator and iClone setup and turn off auto processing. But when you turn off auto processing, um, you're gonna wanna go through and check your base avatar because once it is converted to a VRM, uh, you no longer have any control over it. All right, so we are actually pretty good. We're in good shape. <laughs> awesome, everything's going exactly as you would expect it to go today. That is amazing. So um, now what we wanna do is get rid of our avatar from the scene, but we do not want to delete her from the system. So I'm gonna create a new folder in here and we're gonna call that folder BRM characters. And into that VRM set, our folder, we are going to import the VRM that we just exported. And it's gonna ask us where we want to save them. And we're gonna save it to VRM characters. This will take a second, but it doesn't take very long. All right, and here we are. Our avatar has been imported. And let's take a look at her. So we're going to try that again. And here we go. All right. Now, as you can see, we did not lose anything in the VRM compilation process. Um, I think it probably optimized her hair down a little bit. Um, so you're going to, yeah, it definitely did. But um, overall, you should be able to maintain the same sort of look and feel. Uh, let's just change that here to cut out yeah there we go sometimes you might need to mess with your shaders a little bit but um overall i'm pretty happy with the way this looks so she is a vrm and if you're doing a dance vrm and not a talking vrm you are ready to go right now with the base vrm that you set up but this is a talking VRM. So what we're gonna need to do is go through and set up her speech. You can do this on the blend shape proxy. Just double click it. And this gives you all of the presets I set up. So uh, we do not have any of the visemes or emojis. So we are only going to set up the AR kit for this particular process. We're also going to focus on body, on the body layer, uh, rather than any of the others, because the body layer actually works pretty well, all things considered. So uh, let us go down to the numbered ones. Starting here at A1, uh, we are going to see brow inner up, and then we're going to go see um, all of the blend shapes that uh, Realusion gave us with the character, which is the complete set. So first one is brow in or up. And you just take that to 100. The preview here should show you what the blend shape looks like. And then you just go through the process and do the same thing over and over again. So this one's brow down left. And I'm not going to bore you with that. So what I am going to do is we're just going to do a speed run through here and uh, then I will come back and show you what to do next. See you in a minute. And there we are. All of our blend shapes are in place. And now probably um, we can hit the play button on our character and check out our blend shape proxy in action.
ours are gonna start right about there. The cool thing about blend shape proxies is that you can use them if you wanted to, to make more complex expressions and mix your blend shapes. Now, as far as the eyes, you'll notice here that the eyes don't actually move like the eyeballs. Um, and that's because CC3 characters have eye bones and the eye bones are used by uh, content creation programs like VC Face to manipulate the actual eyes of the character. So when you've got the blend shapes going on, what that is, is designed, what it's designed to do is do the eye movements as the eyes move. The other thing to think about is that some of these expressions look really cartoony. They just, they, they do, um, like this one. But the thing you gotta remember is that uh, you're gonna be having the character tracked by a program like uh, something on your phone or you know you're gonna use webcam tracking of some kind and when you do that um, you're gonna get the blend shapes in percentages so really what you want to do is just pull them up to a hundred percent unless it's something like the mouth closed that breaks your character every time when you turn it up when, when, when you turn the, the things up to a hundred percent um, it lets the program register that blend shape in smaller quantities, like 30%, and it's going to mix it, and it's going to do things with your blend shape proxy uh, that are important. Anyway, um, this looks good. I'm happy with this. So the next thing we want to do is export again. We don't need to make a T-pose because we already did that. And now we can enter in the final name of our model and we're gonna call it version one. I have not changed as the author, but I'm going to put in support information. And who are you gonna call? <laughs> you see, if they were more specific about what reference means, they wouldn't have smart asses like me fill, filling, out, filling out those fields with nonsense. Now, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in my VRM exports directory. I'm going to call it the final name. And that, my friends, is it that gives you the VRM that, that you need from your CC3 character. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And um, that is my presentation. Have a nice evening.